Housing continues to be a concern for many people. Interest rates have gone up. We are also now seeing some lenders go under. Now, they're not big lenders. There's a thing called non-qualified mortgages. What are non-qualified mortgages? They're mortgages that are given to people that might not be able to get the typical mortgage, either because they're self-employed, don't show as much income, but can get mortgages through showing bank statements and cash flow coming in. So this is an article from Yahoo Finance from just two days ago. Two companies, First Guarantee Mortgage and Sprout Mortgage. Now, First Guarantee Mortgage actually filed for bankruptcy, and they said lending volume dropped and left the company with more than $473 million owed to creditors. Now, I'm going to give a big caveat. I don't know their exact financial situation. Is this debt insurmountable? Was it too much? Anyhow, were they a company that was making $20 million a year and they had $473 million in debt? I have no idea. But again, the fact that they're saying that lending volume dropped makes a lot of sense. When you see this big of a jump in interest rates this quickly, that's going to happen. Now, Sprout Mortgage, they just flat out shut down. Again, I don't know much about them specifically, but these are kind of the cracks that you start to see in the ice when you sit there and say there's something fishy going, not fishy, but weird going on here. So here's the 30-year 30 30 fixed mortgage over the last 10 years. Guys, we're at a high, and look how fast this went up. It actually went up faster than it dropped. That's the incredible part here. This is 5.5% here, and we've had some fluctuations in the last few weeks. Now, I've talked about this before, and one thing I want everybody to remember is, Here's how it applies to the average person. If the median home price is 400 and some thousand, let's say they have a $300,000 mortgage. Okay, when rates were 2.6% just a year ago, that's $7,800 a year in interest, okay? All right, it's about $650 a month. Now, if this rate goes to 5.6%, that's a 3% increase. That 3% increase is more than the entire interest charge on the previous mortgage. You went from paying $7,800 a year in interest to now you're at $17,000. That's a big difference when you make hundred to 150000 and then qualifying for a $300,000 mortgage. That is real money. And on top of that, we have inflation. So it's driving up your cost to live and then it's driving up your interest charges. Are you going to be buying as many homes as possible? No, you're going to probably slow down your home buying. It's one thing if costs go up slightly. It's another thing when there's a dramatic jump. So let's go look at some other data that has come in. U.S. existing home sales. I mean, look at this. COVID, and then all of a sudden skyrocket and back down again. This is dropping. Now, some might argue it's inventory. I don't think it's inventory, and here's why. A very simple way to look. If you just Google current housing inventory and go to the Fred website of St. Louis Fed, look at this right here, guys. Just look at the last five years. Look at this big jump at the end from early this year up. It's the highest level it's been since late 2017. Now, granted, this is new houses in the U.S. But remember, if inventory was an issue, we wouldn't be seeing the cancellation on new houses because people would be sitting there saying, let me keep my new house. But cancellation on new homes and cancellation on existing homes are at highs we haven't seen in a long, long time. You're hearing building Builders and building companies talk about how their goal is to conserve their capital. Make sure they're not stretched too thin. They're giving more incentives to close deals and get rid of their excess inventory. This is a very common theme amongst what's going on. Existing home sales. This is the National Association of Realtors. Down 5.9% from June and down 20% from last year. Okay, so 20% from last year. We had inventory issues last year. We have more inventory today, but sales are still down 20%. Just think about that logically. Think about interest rates. Now, does that mean we're going to have a crash in home prices? Not necessarily. If you're new to this channel, I'm Paul. I'm a value investor. I've done a lot of videos on housing. I do a lot of videos on a lot of things having to do investing. And the reason I do that is just like Steph Curry and LeBron James go out there and put repetition after repetition I want to repeat to myself over and over the fundamentals of investing. When I look at homes and home prices, I look at fundamentals. The one thing that's interesting in this time versus 07 and 08, we don't have the loose lending standards we had back then, and we didn't have the inflation back then that we have now. We're still seeing increases in prices or flat in prices during this high inflationary time, and that's what causes, can cause real estate to go up in value over time. The devaluation of the dollars would drive real estate prices, and that's inflation. If your house that you buy today 
cost $300,000. And the cost to build that same house 10 years from now is $600,000. Your house is no longer worth $300,000. Now, it might not be $600,000, but it'll be a lot higher. It'll be closer to $600,000 than $300,000. And that's what drives prices. If you look back, and this is data I've looked at myself, if you go back to 1975, Interest rates were 9% and the average home price was 32,000. Fast forward to 1984, interest rates were 13%. So over, so almost a 50% increase in interest rates and 13%. And guess what? The average home price was 81,600. The median home price, it almost tripled even though rates were up 50%. Why? We also saw massive inflation here. And unemployment, in that time period, went from something like 6% all the way up to 11% and then was back down. I don't remember where it ended in 1984, but the point is you still saw increases in real estate prices because of inflation. Is that a guarantee here? No, nothing's a guarantee. But my goal as a value investor is to look at longer term trends. Five and a half, six percent 6% on home interest rates, that's still pretty good, but we've all been spoiled by our last two years of interest rates on homes. Even I have, I just bought a new house and I'm doing a renovation. So I locked in my rate at 4.25% a couple of months ago and I love it, but I have to get my renovation done. And I definitely have been talking to my fiance about this saying, listen, we need to get this renovation done because if we're not locked in, if we don't get it done by a certain date, the bank can readjust the mortgage. And if Powell plans to increase rates over and over again, which I think is the right move, that will definitely drive rates up. I've also seen contractors be more readily available today to be able to do my renovation than they were a year or two ago when I was doing another house renovation. And that's a very important aspect to me because that's where I get worried about the inflationary times. Because if Fed keeps raising rates and inflation starts to dip, you're now all of a sudden seeing two pressures to, to home prices. Increased interest rates on your home will make the price go down and also decrease of inflation will keep prices lower. So there's all these things working together. Is everything set in stone? No. Obviously, if we knew everything was set in stone, we'd be able to predict the future and we'd all be billionaires and it wouldn't work very well. Efficient markets take misinformation and need people's analysis of the information to be different. What I encourage you to do is take a step back, remove as much emotion as you can because it is hard. And guess what? I'm still emotional as well. But remove as much emotion as you can and look at yourself and say, okay, if I'm looking for a new home right now, maybe I'll pump the brakes a little bit. Maybe I'll wait to see how things pan out. You might end up paying more, but your income might be higher to justify it. Or if you're currently an existing home that you love, but need to move, maybe you'll pump the brakes on that as well. Or if you're moving to a new city, but you know how long you're going to be there, maybe you'll be less likely to buy a home. These are all factors that I can obviously not know what's going on in your life, but these are all things I want to bring in. The point I'm trying to make is, a year or two ago, as we did real estate videos, and I said, listen, if you're making assumptions that the recent jump is going to continue on for a long time, you're probably going to have a problem at some point. And we're now at that problem of, oh, wait a second, are things really happening? I don't know. Now, a good anecdote is this. A friend of mine this weekend called me and said, Paul, I need advice. She's selling her condo here in Cleveland. She put it on the market with a realtor, and the first day she got three offers. And I was like, oh, okay, not bad. But then she told me the price she was asking. And I said, that seems a little low. And she goes, I thought so too. And I was like, interesting. So I think that her neighborhood specifically is a very high demand neighborhood that only has a few sales in it at any given time, but it's a large neighborhood. So I think that helped her. But I was actually surprised about the price she was asking. So there's way more to the story than just she put it for sale and she got three offers. But she also has three more showings today and she hasn't responded to any of those offers yet. So it's going to be a grind out, guys. But this is how it all works together. Interest rates, everything is going to work together. Inflation, interest rates, supply, demand, jobs, GDP, et cetera, et cetera. We don't know if we're in a recession or not. But you better believe if we do have a recession, that will probably get less people to be buying homes saying, hey, wait a second, let me hold off. Let me see how this transpires with a new job or do I keep my job or whatever. These are all parts of what goes on in the process of thinking about investing. If you like this video, I encourage you to watch our next video on recessions could be an opportunity of a lifetime. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.